Welcome back to American Arms Channel, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Drake. As you can tell, today we're back out on the public range, and what we're up to is we're going to do some pattern testing and some slug shooting with the Akas S4. So I've not really demonstrated any patterns, I've not really demonstrated any slug shooting so far, even though I've run plenty of buckshot and plenty of slugs through the gun, and I kind of know what to expect. Uh, I decided that, you know what, I need to test some new loads I picked up at a local gun shop that were available to me, and uh, I decided that, hey, you know what, we're going to test out the ammunition, see if it's worth a damn, and see if this gun likes it, or if it'll shoot well out of this gun. Uh, today we're taking a look at some Black Aces Tactical Double Out Buckshot. We're taking a look at some NSI Double Out Buckshot that's actually a 2 and 3 quarter inch 12 pellet load. You might have seen those around. They've been around for a few years, but it seems like there's a good amount of it in the country today. Um, so there's two Italian loads, and then we've got a Turkish load, a Sterling branded Pala Slug. It's a 32 gram, which comes out to be, as far as the box claims, 1 and 5 30 second ounces. So, kind of close to an ounce and an eighth, ounce and a sixteenth, uh, but obviously it's five thirty seconds. Um, so, kind of an odd weight for American shooters. We're used to one ounces, or we're used to one and an eighth or one and a quarter ounce slugs. But this is a 32 gram, and it's pretty nice looking. And we're going to start off with some slug shooting. We're going to take a shot at 25 yards just to see where it's impacting, and then we're going to push it out to 50 and see what we can put together for a 50 yard grouping on three shots. Let's get right into it. All right, so right now we're gonna take a look at the Turkish Pala slug, and maybe that in a Turkish or something else is actually slug, so maybe it's slug slug, I'm not sure. But this is their big game series, series as it's labeled in English. Again, a 32 gram slug. It looks a lot like a Brenneke, but my understanding is it's more of a foster in style. So it's kind of a hybrid between the two. So we're gonna see how this does. Um, it looks to be a quality round. It is very well roll crimped. Absolutely none of these have been uh, a problem. I've bought three boxes of them. So we're gonna shoot a box today. All 30 shells have been very high quality in my evaluation, but I've not fired a single one yet. So let's see where the point of impact is. If maybe if I need to adjust my red dot for windage, um, I will, but I'm not gonna adjust it for drop. We're just gonna see where it hits at 25, and then we're gonna make a group of three shots at 50. All right, let's take a shot at 25 and see where our point of impact is. This will be the first round I've ever fired of these big game series slugs by Sterling. Chambered just fine. Just doing it off my elbows here. So let's take a look at the point of impact. Looks like perfectly centered, but a little bit low. We'll see how that turns out at uh, 50 yards, but uh, that felt pretty good. Very mild in recoil, a little bit of muzzle flip, a little smoky, but ejected just fine. All right, so one, two, pretty damn close to each other, and I definitely pulled the third shot. Looking at my elevation, I've adjusted my red dot up, I should say, but brought the dot down to meet those points of impact. And then feeling when the gun felt right, well, I'm still about an inch and a half low here at 50, so I've tuned it up just a little bit more, but definitely could tell that I pulled it just a little bit left when I broke the shot. So I'm pretty much centered up, 
we're actually going to give it a try at 100 yards here in a minute and see how it does. I think these slugs have good accuracy potential. All right, so unfortunately, while my aim was true, my impacts were not. Got one, two, and it looks like number three is somewhere here because I'm not seeing any other fresh, large caliber impacts on this rubber backer board. So we were a little bit low, which was to be expected, but we're pretty far right. So a little bit odd that uh, we're pretty well zeroed at 50, but we're a little far right at 100. So what we're going to do is I've got two slugs left out of that box that I have with me today. And we're just going to shoot them one, two at the same point of aim at 50 yards. And we're going to see if we can stack them on top of each other. Maybe it's just going to take playing with them more. I think they've got good accuracy potential. We just need to find out. Well, <laughs> aiming for this dot in very strange lighting because we've got thunderstorms, it's evening, and the sun keeps poking out and disappearing. Um, landed here and landed up here. So that's pretty awful at 50 yards, especially after these two and the one that I know I pulled. This one, which is pretty dang close to what I was trying to zero for, and then the three up there, which we give a pretty good idea of where they were landing. This has got to be me. I've got to be jerking the trigger. Um, I have. I will admit that I have definitely developed a serious flinching issue with larger bore stuff now because of the 10 gauge. Um, development of the slugs in particular was a little rough on me, and a lot of the turkey load work I did this spring definitely screwed me up. And because those sterlings were not kicking very hard, they were very mild, it was all mental. So I think it's a decent slug. Um, we did have two malfunctions. That could be the gun. It could be the slug. Um, we, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure out what's going on. I did change the lifter in the gun, which we'll go over at a different time. But it does look like, you know, this is definitely me. It looks like these slugs are decent. So I'm going to buy some more of them, have them on hand. Because right now, it's kind of hard to find American-made foster slugs. And I do know that those shoot pretty well. I shot some 3-inch Remingtons. And once again, stacked two on top of each other and pulled the third. So apparently I've got to shoot one round groups from now on, or one round at a time for groups with little breaks in between until I get over this flinching problem. But that said, uh, Turkish slugs and a Turkish shotgun seems appropriate. And I didn't mention it earlier, but I am using a Carlson modified 0.705 inch constriction choke. So it is a true modified and I will get into it at a later time why I've chosen that choke over the factory chokes. Um, but modified is typically what I run when I'm in, when I'm looking at buckshot, um, especially bear pellet buckshot. And now let's transition over to some actual buckshot shooting. All right guys, so next up running the same choke as we were for the slugs, which is again the Carlson 0.705 inch modified Benelli Beretta mobile choke. We're going to try out the nine pellet bear buck shot. Black Ace is tactical. It is rated at uh, 1425 box rating. And we're also going to try out the NSI or Noble Sport Italia 12 pellet, 1290 foot per second rating. Both of these are bear buck shot loads. I have not cleaned the bore from the slugs. The bore started out clean with the slugs today. Now it is let it up and we're going to leave it that way so these both have an equal playing field. So let's look at what the patterns will be with the dirty bore. 
and give these a try. We're going to shoot them at 10 yards to start, then 15, and then we'll take a look at a 25 yard pattern. I've set up my circles as aiming points on either side. On the left side is the NSI. On the right side is the Black Aces Tactical. Starting off with the NSI 12 pellet, and then followed up by the Black Aces Tactical 9 pellet. We're not really looking for zero or for accuracy here. We're solely looking at grouping. So I'm just going to put the dot pretty much on top of the aiming point and pull the trigger. Here we go. Well, I can tell you what, that NSI um, definitely moves around a lot. It's not bad in recoil, but it is significantly more than a standard nine pellet. You might be able to see from here the patterns we just got. And I definitely pulled them a little bit right off of center, but again, we're not looking for accuracy here. We're just putting it on the target and firing. So let's go take a look. All right, so the NSI definitely put out a very deadly pattern. We've got one slight flyer here, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. I can cover all twelve pretty much in a six inch circle, or excuse me, all eleven of the core. It's a six inch circle, and we've still got that one flyer. So we're going to mark that up with dashes here. That definitely would ruin your day down the hallway with that modified choke. And probably would do pretty well with cylinder bore, improved cylinder, skeet two, all of that. Now taking a look here at our, <laughs> we took out the B and bat with our uh, wadding, but um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine might have struck up here with the wad or might have had a double hit, but everything is in the size of my hand. So we're pretty much inside of a four to five inch circle here. Again, we're gonna mark these with a dash. And while these are incredibly effective patterns, they definitely, with this choking gun as it's setting, they're not going to be too promising for past 25 yards, in my opinion, but for home defense, I think this is a perfectly reasonable spread. Um, the lower velocity, actually, with the NSI with the higher pellet count, while you're going to have more devastation on target if you're worried about over penetration, that round might be a better choice. Uh, the nine pellet standard load from Black Aces Tactical seems to be decent with just one shot. It's the first shot I've ever fired of that stuff. Um, definitely felt warm, but not ridiculous. So let's back up an additional five yards and take a look at what our 15 yard patterns are. So once again, we're standing here at about 15 yards, approximately, not an exact measurement. And just for your viewing pleasure, on your right is the NSI 12 pellet, and on your left is the Black Aces Tactical, a nine pellet load. Both are very handsome. Both seem to be very well roll crimped. Um, are they absolutely perfect? No, they're a little bit lower cost. Now, what's lower cost these days? But you can find the NSI load online for anywhere from 45 to 65 cents a round. And you can find this online for around $16.99. So somewhere around 65 to 70 cents a round um, if you really shop, but they're not, always available uh, at those price points. But typically, in normal times, these are fairly cost-effective buckshot loads for hunting, home defense, and range use. So once again, NSI first, followed up by the Black Vegas' tactical. We're going to go on the left and then the right at approximately 15 yards. Let's go take a look. So these are absolutely good to go patterns, 15 yards and in right now. We've got our 12 pellet here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 or so. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like maybe we bled over a few pellets from the Black Aces Tactical. Can't really tell, but it looks like the NSI is holding a better pattern than the Black Aces Tactical, at least out of this barrel and this Carlson's Modified Choke Tube. So before the storm blows us away, I'm gonna get under the shelter real quick and we will resume at 25 yards and see if, what kind of percentages we can get on that nice 12 inch circle that we're looking for in a combat or hunting buckshot pattern.
Well, as you can probably tell, we've been interrupted on this range session by a pop-up thunderstorm, which wasn't too surprising seeing how we're in the late summer in Appalachia. So, our pattern board is soaked. I don't think there's much point in me trying to shoot through the rain and show you guys a soaked, nasty target. Uh, we're gonna try and wait this one out for a second. <laughs> Turkish M4 clone and run seven rounds of full power black aces tackle buckshot through her and see how she does. Ah, oh, yeah, that's the good stuff right there. Black 
It's not a vanilla M4, but it seems to be good enough to do what it needs to. With full power, fuck shot. I have not had this thing malfunction. I haven't ran that many rounds through it, but at this point, my estimation for how many full power buck and hunting loads I put through this that are of high quality, good, good to high quality, not lower tier, not the cheapest thing you can get, or the, the, the most value price thing you can get. It's eaten just about all of it perfectly, especially the buck shot. Very happy with it for its performance thus far. I'm still going to buy a Benelli M4 at some point in my life, sooner or later. But this has fulfilled the itch for me. It's a great platform to build off of. If you want to put something together, I'm getting very close to saying, if you like to play with stuff, this is a great gun. But out of the box, she might or she might not need some help. All smiles. It's starving. All blasted away. Life is good. <laughs>